Good day, folks. Thanks for tuning in. It's Tracy VE3TWM. I'm here with my good friend Randy VE3OZR. We've got three missions that we're going to try to accomplish today. The first one is show you some of the differences between a 31 foot jackite telescopic fiberglass pole and a spider beam 40 foot telescopic pole. The second one we're going to do is we're going to use the spider beam to set up a high end fed three band antenna end fed as a vertical with no need for counterpoises or ground radials. And to see how well it works, we're gonna to try to make some contacts during the Ontario QSO party, which is running today. So here we go. We've got the two products that we're gonna be taking a look at from a pole, a telescopic mast uh, perspective today. The first one, this is my tried and true Jackite 31 foot pole. I've been using these for years in all kinds of weather conditions. They've proven their durability. They're a terrific thing. Um, but I was curious. I, I've always been curious, actually, for the past number of years in regard to the spider beam. The spider beam is a bigger, heavier, taller alternative to the jackite poles. This particular model is 12 meters, which works out to about 40 feet. And um, though I haven't had the chance to put it into practical application, today is the first day I'll be doing so, um, we're going to give it a try a little bit later on. I will let you know that you can see the collapsed length of the jackite versus the spider beam. It's only a slight difference, maybe a couple of inches extra, but the weight is considerable. I would suggest to you that at seven pounds, the spider beam is nearly twice the weight of the jackite. Having said that, I'm really interested in trying to get the antenna up a little bit higher. The objective today is to get a uh, 40 foot wire end fed antenna, a three band high end fed oriented in a vertical, a completely vertical uh, orientation and setting up to try to make some contacts on the ham bands. I brought along my FT817 today. So let's give that a shot and see how it works out. One more point about the comparison between the jackite pole and the spider beam pole. So the jackite poles do have a fair amount of flex in them. I'm just going to show you, here's the end tip. Uh, you can see the amount of flex that I get. I'm not really applying too much pressure to the jackite here. Uh, take a look at the diameter. Here's the spider beam over here, considerably thicker at the top. The, this is, you know, the thickness all the way throughout lends to the difference in weight. Um, but, but let's take a look at the flex compared. Not nearly so much. So this is going to mean that an antenna supported with the spider beam is going to remain more vertical. It may also, of course, because we've got a heavier mast, mean that you're going to have to guy it at some point if you tend to keep it up in a permanent location where there's going to be a lot of wind. Okay, it's time to take a look at the fun part of all this, which is the antenna itself. Ron at High End Fed was kind wow. enough to send me one of his three band classic antennas. This is a 100 watt antenna. It's got a PL, sorry, an SO239 connection here. There is also a backpacking lighter weight version available with a BNC connector. This one is rated for 100 watts. Ron uh, writes to tell me that he's also got one now which is rated for 150 watts. It's a 40 foot long. It covers from 40, uh, 20, and 10 meters. It can be used on other bands with a tuner. Uh, on 40 meters, you should expect to see about 200 kilohertz of bandwidth. On 20, full band coverage, and on 10, approximately the lower one megahertz of that band. Uh, my, my project today is to set up this 40 foot long antenna with the spider beam 40 foot mast, make it a vertical because it's an end fed, because it's a high end fed. It does not need counterpoise, it does not need ground radials, and we're going to see just how effective it will be. Okay, let's take a closer look at the high-end fed three-band classic. So as the label indicates, it covers from 40, 20, and 10 meters. Um, it does not cover the bands in between without a tuner. The idea is with these three bands, you do not need a tuner to use this antenna. At least on 40 meters, you can cover 200 kilohertz of the band without the tuner. The 20 megahertz band, you shouldn't need a tuner at all. And on the lower one megahertz, of uh, 10 meters, 10 meters is a huge band of course, uh, no tuners should be required. Uh, I want to point out to you on the back here, we've got a solid bar with two holes drilled in it. I used these uh, last, uh, last fall when we were out making our CQ Worldwide video, I used uh, these holes 
to have paracord attached and run off to a, a nearby tree. The idea was to keep the end point up off the ground about a meter or so, about three feet, uh, just uh, the, that's uh, per manufacturer's spec for the best possible performance. Uh, it worked out very well for me. Uh, you'll notice that it's an SO239 connection. Uh, the high-end fed guys also sell these with a BNC connector for QRP utilization. Something else I'll point out to you on the antenna is the 40 meter loading coil. Now this is a 40 foot long antenna, not quite long enough uh, electrically for 40 meters. That's where this coil comes in. It ex electrically extends the length of the antenna, allowing you to operate on a band uh, where you wouldn't be able to operate at such a short length of antenna. Um, so a, a, nice, uh, a nice way of compromising to give you extra capability. Let's take a look finally at the tail end. This is the far end of the antenna and they've got a clever little device down here designed to allow you to shorten or lengthen the antenna without actually cutting the wire. There's a, there's a screw here. Um, the wire comes in and around. You loosen up on the screw pull the excess wire through to make the antenna shorter if need be, or you can lengthen it. You can see it's in its fully extended position right here. Chances are when we get the antenna up, um, it's going to be a little bit long and we'll be able to very easily, without cutting, which is important because every installation location will have its own requirements. Um, you may need that extra length at a later time in a later deployment. Um, this this is a, a neat little feature and I like it a lot. Finally the insulator. This is what I'm going to affix to the top end of the spider beam pole. Actually, it's not bad even with the... Uh, not bad at all. Trace, that's not bad. That's pretty damn good, man. To lift up the pole and walk it into place. Actually, maybe before I do that, I'll just uh, explain the shot. I'll, I'll say here's we're just going to stick the pole in the nook here and the legs. Okay, let me go pull back a little bit here. Oh, we'll pull back a bit more here. So as you can see, I'm just getting the... Okay. I'm really just getting to a point where I can grab the bottom. So the next stage of uh, antenna installation is actually getting the feed line closer to the operating position while keeping the wire further away from the metal legs of the picnic table. I'm going to use some paracord. I am actually going to use one of the holes on the back of the, uh, the bracket here on the back of the uh, matching unit and uh, that's, all I'm, that's all it's going to take. One piece of paracord tied off to the far end of the picnic table and I'll be in business.
WWV at SE. It looks promising. This is bad. This is bad. Interesting. They're talking about bad conditions so on the we'll bands see. this we'll weekend. See. Maybe we'll get a little improvement. I'm going to use about the same uh, um, track that I did last year. I'll get up there on side band and uh, we'll see if, how we can do. We're hoping to do 32 counties this year. We uh, did 30 last year. Who's um, we? But, These hams uh, who, you know, they'd, they'd never say it in conversation. County, you know, if you were talking to them face to face. They never call themselves we. You jump on the radio, all of a sudden, it's we. I means we. It's like, yeah. who's we? Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike, QRP. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike, QRP. Copy that. Uh, I am also 5-9 Halt and I'm actually at Rattlesnake Point Conservation Area. Set up uh, QRP here with uh, with just a, a, a very rudimentary three-band vertical shooting a YouTube video here. So I appreciate your coming back to me. Okay, very good. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm about, um, uh, I, I'm about uh, um, half a mile from you here. <laughs> well, you're good and strong. Fantastic. Well, thanks for taking my call and uh, have yourself a good contest. Thanks a lot, 7 3. Uh, and, uh, who, who is that other station? The Victor Alpha 3? 7 3, QRZ Nebraska, QSO Party, Whiskey Bravo 0, Yankee, Yankee Echo. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike, QRP. Uh, the QRP standby, Whis uh, Victor Echo 3, Whiskey Golf 59, Lancaster County. Thanks for Ontario, 7-3, thanks for calling uh, the QRP again. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike, QRP. Is that uh, Victor Echo 3, Echo Whiskey Whiskey? Negative, Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Uh, I heard a uh, Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Whiskey. Almost, Tango Whiskey Mike. Uh, Victor Echo 3 coming towards the northeast for Victor Echo 3 again. Victor Echo 3, Texas, Washington, Minnesota. Tango Whiskey Mike. Gotcha. Tango Whiskey White. Mike, uh, 5 9, Lancaster County. Thank you very much. You're 5 9 from Ontario. Uh, I don't know if you need a serial number. If you do, it's 01. Thank you for 01. Yeah, just the uh, disinfection is uh, all I need, but. We'll take it all. Uh, the E3, Tango Whiskey Mike, 7-3. Thank you. Good luck. QRZ Nebraska, USO Party, Whiskey Bravo Zero, Yankee, Yankee Echo. So we set up the antenna. Uh, it worked very well. I'm really impressed with it. Uh, again, another high-end fed product that, that's really doing a job for us. I heard several operators as I was scanning through uh, talking about the terrible band conditions today. Uh, in spite of all of that, I was able to make a couple of contacts into North Dakota, uh, one into Nebraska, uh, a local one here in Ontario, and even some DX. Um, I, I think the vertical antenna is, is a really great solution. It's one that's fairly easy to deploy. Of course, it only requires one support, uh, as opposed to two with uh, typical uh, slopers and uh, horizontal antennas. Uh, great for limited space applications. Two thumbs up for that, two thumbs up for the spider beam pole which remains uh, fairly straight in this implementation. We haven't got much of a wind here today uh, but uh, but nonetheless I, I've been impressed with its heft and uh, uh, and I think it's a great product. I'm very sorry that uh, that I'm only borrowing it and it doesn't actually belong to me so I'll have to look for something else to use come field day. Uh, speaking of field day, uh, I have already booked a campsite for field day 2016. My friend Randy and I will be coming up. Uh, we may have some special guests in tow, uh, and I hope that you'll tune in for that one as well. On this note, I'd like to say thank you very much to everyone who has subscribed, who has liked my channel. Thank you to Ron at High End Fed Antennas for his continued support and expertise. 
Um, and uh, please, if you're not a subscriber, uh, consider becoming one. I really appreciate it. It's the type of feedback I get that keeps me coming back out here to make more videos. Best of uh, 73 to all of you. This is Tracy on behalf of Randy VE3OZR, Tracy VE3TWM. Take care and I'll catch you next time. Everything just worked well this time, Rand. The antenna, the mast, installation. My buddy's ingenuity at using the picnic table as a support. Okay, so once in a while, when you're tearing down your station, because you got the telescopic pole, you need to collapse, the sections will become stuck. So how do you unstick them? I always bring along in my deployments a couple of items. Number one, I've got these rubber gloves. I picked these up at the dollar store. I think they cost me $3. Uh, I also have a rubber mallet. I may not need the rubber mallet, but I can use it to tap down on the top of the stuck element uh, if I need to. Um, but I'm going to start off with the gloves first of all. The gloves provide a better, uh, better amount of grip on the surface. And I do have a little bit of a stiction issue here between these two sections on the spider beam pole. And there we go. So the rubber gloves did it this time. 